Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is day two of our envisioning and writing activity. Uh, we're focusing on Celilo Falls. My name is Mrs. Brown and I am a middle school history teacher and so I'm leading the lesson for the next uh, couple of weeks. One thing I didn't tell you is that one of the reasons why Celilo Falls is so important to me is because I am from and descended from various tribes in the region. I was born and raised on the Yakima Reservation so I identify most closely with that tribe because that, that was my tradition, my culture, even though we weren't raised traditionally. And I'm also a uh, Muckleshoot from my grandma's side and then from my grandpa's side, uh, Snohomish, Stillaguamish, Squaxin, Puyallup, and Snoqualmie Indians. And my grandpa called that canoe Indian. So uh, I'm really, really happy to be with you today. And I uh, just wanted to let you know that um, what we're gonna be doing today, you, um, I'm gonna be working from a packet. And if you didn't download and print the packet or get the, print, or, or get the packet at one of the meal sites, that's okay, just use a piece of paper. And it's okay that you're coming in with day two. Day two today, I am working on a little bit of geography about Celilo Falls so that we learn a little bit more about it before we do some writing. And what we did last time is we envisioned a really special place. Uh, we used our five senses. We uh, talked about what a place would look like, sound like, feel like, smell like, and even taste like. And so I did that with a place that's really important to me, Cemetery Road. And so I told you that I would draw a picture of it, and I did, and uh, I also have it here. Whoops, I'll move on to the next one. Yes, it's Wednesday the 25th. I'll move here to uh, my drawing. Now, it doesn't need to be this this elaborate. I found some I found some colored pencils, and to tell you the truth, I took a lot of uh, high school art classes, uh, so it so it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be perfect to you because ultimately what I want you to do is to paint a picture or draw a picture using words so that we can envision just like we practiced last time. And so you can see the pillars where my friends and I sang. You can see the irrigation ditch, although it looked really blue. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably make it green because it was really a lot more green. And there's the tar and gravel road. And then there's Darren Kistler's tree. And I even put his tree house there um, and the doorbell. He had a doorbell. And, um, <clears throat> and this is not accurate, but it wasn't part of my, it wasn't part of my memory that it was really important to or important uh, to me about. And so I just didn't bother with that. And so then I ended up drawing a little bit more and then I even drew an irrigation gate where people would turn the crank and then release more water. Um, remember in the pictures that I showed you last time, uh, I said that there was something missing. It was this area here that we called the pit. Now that's a whole other story that we would be talking about. So as I said, we're gonna be talking today about Celilo Falls. And so I'm gonna be taking a look at my packet here. And here we are at Celilo Falls. Now, Celilo Falls is along the Columbia River in between Washington and Oregon. This is the Oregon side, and uh, it is where the falls were. The falls were closest to that side, and so that's where all the fishers were. Now, tribal people have been fishing Celilo Falls since the beginning of time. That's since the first daylight, since before remembering. So it's been thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years that people have been gathering here to trade and fish. And then there are also, uh, there's also a tribe here that lived there year round and they were the YM. And so you can see all of the fishers and what they're doing. They, um, they, they don't have fishing poles. They do have poles. These poles are really long and they actually dip down into the water and they have a net attached to it. And so that's how they would catch the salmon. And so this place, this place, um, it, there is this um, author whose name is, oh, Annie Lou Alexander, and she wrote a book called Blood is Red and So Am I. And there's an, a description that stuck with me. She said it was like a state fair all summer long because the Chinook would start running in the spring and then it would go all the way into the fall. And so all summer people were fishing and preparing 
uh, preparing fish for the winter and then also preparing it for trade. And so people would come from all over to trade because there was nothing like these salmon. And the salmon were so plentiful, our elders said that you could walk across the river on its back, on their backs. And, uh, and so there was plenty for everyone. And uh, as I said, people would come and they would trade. And so let me tell you a little bit here. So here's Salilo Falls, here's Washington, and here's Oregon. And you can see that salmon would get traded to all of the areas in the Northwest. And there are a bunch of things that people would trade because there was no money. This was the money. This was the currency. And so for salmon, you would have uh, shells. You would have bone shells, um, obsidian roots that you, um, obsidian and um, roots and seeds, excuse me. You'd have all kinds. And then there's this arrow here that kind of goes off into this Plains and Plateau Tribes area, but actually it went further than that. The people would come from around, uh, from as far as the Great Lakes region. And so that's, that's like around where Chicago is today. And, um, and so they would come. And so why would they come so far? Why do you think? Remember I said it was like the state fair? It was a lot of fun. This is where people would dance and sing and trade and gamble. Now gambling for native people is very different from what you think about gambling today in casinos. Gambling was a part of everyday life. Gambling was a way that people did what was called redistributing wealth. This is where people would win money. This is where people would lose money. This is where people would trade. So it was even called like the, the, um, the Wall Street of the West because so many fortunes were made and maybe some lost as well. But people would come from as far as the Great Lakes. And so here comes our geography part of the lesson. And so you have these questions in your packet, but that's okay. I prepared a slide for those of you who don't have a packet. I prepared a slide so that you can write down um, the questions and the things that I want you to think about. Okay, so here is the area that we're going to be talking about. This is a 1908 map. And we can see Washington is up here in the upper left-hand corner. And that Celilo Falls is right here in between Washington and Oregon. And if you look really close uh, on your packet uh, or if you grab a, a map, you can see that there are a lot of waterways and waterways. And then there are the Rockies, the Rocky Mountains. And then you go keep on going. Then there are the Great Plains. And then way over here is the Great Lakes region. So how far do you think that is? This is our, our first question. How far do you think it is? And so I don't want you to look it up on Google. I want you to estimate. Estimate how, how far. And so you have to have some type of reference point, right? And so the first thing that I want to say, show you is that Washington is about 360 miles wide. And so I can take that and I can estimate 360, 360, 360, and then some. I think about on the other side, if I were coming from the lakes over there, I would have to estimate even further, but this is far. And so this is one way that you can estimate distance on a map. Sometimes you have that legend. This is how you would use, this is how you would use, um, I'm sorry, this is how you would use the scale of your map. And you'd be able to estimate and so how far do you think it is? And then again, we start thinking about that's a long way. That's a long way. And can you review, can you think about why people would go at all? What would be so important for folks way over here to travel all the way over here without a car, without a truck, without trains, without scooters, and without airplanes. And what would be so important for them to get here? You remember what we talked about? It was the salmon, and it was the community, and it was the experience. Is that people traded all over, traded for what they needed and wanted. And the greatest currency here was not even thought of as currency. 
This area was sacred. It's another vocabulary word I want you to think about. It was sacred. And if you look sacred up in the dictionary, it says worthy of worship. And certainly you're not going to worship a place. Um, but the other part of the definition says that it is worthy of great respect. They use the word reverence. And so this place beco becomes so sacred, not just to the people in the Northwest, but everywhere. And so why go at all? Well, it's a very important part of the economy, the culture, the religion, and all of the traditions that are, that are involved. And so why go at all? But then I want you to think about the next transportation. Uh, I want you to think about transportation next. Uh, how would people get there? Crossing the plains, the Rockies, and so forth. What, how do you think that they would, that they would get there? Certainly by foot, certainly they probably have maybe some pack animals if they were very lucky and that was, that was in their culture. In fact, the plains people are horse people and so they, so they would, but then how else? And so I want you to take a look at this map on, or if you can look up another map, and I want you to think about what the tributaries are that lead into, or that, that empty into the Columbia River. If you remember, tributaries are bodies of water, creeks and rivers that feed into larger bodies of water, like the Columbia, that then feed into even a larger body of water, the Pacific Ocean over here. And so you think about all of the Columbia River's tributaries. You pro probably want to take advantage of that, right? And so for the last part of your lesson, which you don't need to complete today, you probably um, want to look at another map other than this one, um, maybe, but you can use this map. It won't have all of this here, but I want you to imagine, I want you to think about what are those possible water and land routes that people from all the way over here would take to get to Salila Falls. It wasn't just for fish. It was for something really, really, really sacred and important. And so that's our geography lesson for today. So today you did learn about Salido Falls. You learned a little bit about its history and you learned about the geography. And you learned a little bit about, um, about its importance to tribal people, not just in the Northwest, but everywhere. So we talked about that and then um, I shared with you some vocabulary and some geography skills that I want you to complete. Uh, I would invite you to complete. And, um, and then next time, next time then we are geared up. We are all ready to use our senses to not only envision, but also infer. When I start reading out loud a story about Salila Falls, we'll read that together. And then we will do some more of those reading and writing skills. So until next time, thank you so much for hanging out with me and think more about Salido Falls. Think more about your place. Maybe you have, uh, you've seen some more details here that you might want to jot down in the beginnings of what could be a really great story for you. Maybe you add them to your sketches and your drawings if you've, draw, if you've um, drawn them. So thank you very much and I will see you next time.